Oh, waiter. Yes, sir? I'll have a vegetable salad with cottage cheese, some toasted crackers, and a bottle of cold Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. From Hollywood, Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, production Fort Apache, director John Ford, stars John Wayne, Ward Bond. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a footnote to Valor, Fort Apache, starring John Wayne and Ward Bond introduced by the director of the film, John Ford. Ever since the infant days of motion pictures, a kind of violent chain reaction has been exploding in Hollywood. The source of this rather awesome force is our guest screen director tonight. His explosions have taken the form of such brilliantly directed films as The Informer, Stagecoach, How Green Was My Valley, and tonight's story, Fort Apache. Ladies and gentlemen, the director, Mr. John Ford. Thank you. I don't know as I'd call Fort Apache an explosion... If I were translating it into sound, I'd say it was a bugle call, brave and distant and a little sad, an echo of the cavalry regiments that galloped to meet adventure on our western plains. Now, here's our film story for the first time on the air, starring John Wayne in his original role of Captain York and Ward Bond as Colonel Thursday, Fort Apache. <laughs> This is the story of Fort Apache, of the regiment, the officers and men who manned her. How they lived, how some of them died. Fort Apache was the last frontier, a tiny cavalry outpost in the heart of Indian-infested country. My name is Captain Kirby York. I'd been through enough Indian campaigning to have a healthy respect for the Apache, both as a fighter and as a man. Colonel Owen Thursday, the new commanding officer, was a career man out of headquarters in Washington with a lot of strange ideas about frontier discipline, military science, and the lowly savage Indian. Gentlemen, I have been ordered to assume command of Fort Apache and to aid the Indian agent Meacham in putting down the uprising caused by the Apache chief, Cochise. While some of our regiments are leading well-publicized campaigns against the great Indian nations, we are asked merely to ward off a few cowardly digger Indians. The Apaches, sir, are hardly digger Indians. You would scarcely compare them with the Sioux, Captain York. No, Colonel, I wouldn't. The Sioux raided into Apache territory once. You could follow the Sioux retreat by the bones of their dead. We'll discuss that some other time, Captain. The immediate point is that Cochise and his Apaches have left the reservation. Our orders are to get them back. Sir, no troop or squadron or regiment can keep an Apache on a reservation unless he wants to stay there. Five years ago, we made a treaty with Cochise, and his Apache stayed on the reservation in peace. For how long, Captain? Until the Indian agent, Meacham, was sent out by the Indian ring. He cheated them, degraded them, until they couldn't take it anymore. Cochise broke his treaty. Yes, rather than stay here and see his nation wiped out. The political aspects of the situation do not concern me, Captain York. We have a military job to do, which I am sure we will accomplish with glory. This is hardly a country for glory, Colonel, but I wish you luck, sir. Any questions? No questions, sir. For some reason, the few Apaches who had remained on the reservation were extremely quiet. This was unusual. It worried me. But evidently it didn't worry Colonel Thursday, for about a week later I was detailed to escort his daughter out riding for an inspection of the Mesa. Come on, Captain! Stop, Miss Thursday! (laughs) Well, I... I I beat 
meet you. You shouldn't have raced ahead that way, Miss Thursday. Why not? Well, this is Indian country, and I'm responsible for you. Oh, I'm not afraid. Oh, oh, look, Captain, down there. Smoke. Is it an Indian signal? No, not a signal. That's where our telegraph wires run through to Fort Grant. Oh. I've got to ride down this slope and find out. Can you get back alone? Alone? No, no, I'm going with you. Here. Easy now. Let him have his head. Uh, it, it's a wagon burning. Yeah, it's the one we sent out on the patrol, the telegraph line. Don't look. Stay here. But the men. They're dead. Huh? Apaches. Oh. Come on, let's get out of here. We've got to get back to the fort. Colonel. Colonel Thursday, sir. Now what, Captain York? Repair wagon. Burned. And the troopers? Spread eagle down the wheels. Roasted. Oh, no. Where did it happen? Near Blue Mesa, sir. They cut the telegraph wires. Captain Collingwood, hand me that map. Yes, sir. Now, show me the place, York. Here, sir. On this low spot between the hills. Captain York, send out a wagon a detail to repair the wires and bring back the bodies. Yes, sir. Sergeant Mulcahy. Yes, sir. Assemble a platoon from Company A. A platoon? I said a detail, Captain. An officer and four men. But those Apaches may still be around, Colonel. I am running a command, not a debating society. Captain York, you will personally take the detail and leave at once. Very good, sir. If I know Apaches, Colonel, you're sending those men to a certain death. I know what I am doing, Collingwood. And now you assemble a platoon immediately. You mean the platoon is going to trail a wagon? Correct, at a striking distance. Surely, Collingwood, even you have heard of the trap as a military weapon. Uh, Yes, sir. I don't like this, Captain. Send us out like this alone. Neither do I. What do you think, sir? You think the devils will be waiting for us? Can't tell. Patches are tricky. Take it easy now. The wire breaks just around this bend. Right. Oh! Where up there? Mother of mercy. Two of our own lads. Burned alive. Why, you devils, you mother of... Quiet, Mulcahy! They've been back. They've stripped off the men's shoes. The barbarians. Well, make them pay with me own hands. All right, men, quick. Get out those blankets and that wire and work fast. Well, I know Apaches, they'll be back. Hey, Pete. Yeah, we're gone. Go for it. You? Get up on that pole and fix that wire break. All right, we're gone. I'll, I'll take care of our men myself. I'm going up that rock and have a look. They're around here. I can feel it. Any sign of them? Nothing yet, but hurry it up. They know we're here. Down! Get down! Get down off that pole, man! Come on, let's get out of here. Put the wire break. It's not fixed yet. You haven't got a chance. All right, men. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. There must be a hundred of them. Diablo's band. We're like clay pigeons out here in the open. Master, we got out. to the Screen Directors Playhouse production of Fort Apache, starring John Wayne and Ward Bond, and introduced by the director of the film, Mr. John Ford. You are in Atlantic City. The boardwalk is crowded with strollers. 
You, foot-weary and breathless from a marathon walk, pause to wipe the perspiration from your forehead. The salt air is cooling, but somehow it doesn't satisfy your thirst. There must be a place nearby where you can... Wait a second. What's that little blue sign in the cafe window? Oh, brother. Pabst Blue Ribbon. (laughs) Finest beer served anywhere. Yes, during these hot August days, you're just one of millions of men all over America to whom that Pabst Blue Ribbon sign means welcome relief. For Pabst Blue Ribbon does something more than quench your thirst. It gives you taste. Blue Ribbon taste. The kind of taste you can't get anywhere else in the world except in that Pabst Blue Ribbon bottle. And, fortunately, you can get that Blue Ribbon bottle all over the world. Yes, you hear it everywhere in Atlantic City and Appleton and Ann Arbor and Atlanta. Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Now, back to our screen director's playhouse production of Fort Apache, starring John Wayne and Ward Bond. What was left of Diablo's raiding party after the battle, we took back to the reservation at Claw Springs. But that didn't solve the problem. They were just a handful. There were still Cochise in the entire Apache nation across the Rio Bravo in Mexico. But right here at Claw Springs was the root of the trouble. The unscrupulous Indian agent, Meacham. Mr. York, how good to see you. Captain York Meacham. Oh, yes, of course, you soldier boys and your title. And this is Colonel Thursday. Ah, another exile in the wilderness. Mr. Meacham, a band of Indians left this reservation. Yes, the ungrateful dogs. I treat them well. Meacham, you drove Cochise and the Apaches off this reservation by starving and degrading them. Why, I... I, Giving them whiskey instead of beef. Trinkets instead of blankets. But I... I, Cochise did the only thing a decent man could do. He left and took his people with him. Across the Rio Bravo into Mexico. Why, he he broke his treaty, and I demand you soldier boys bring him back by force if necessary. Any demands you wish to make, Mr. Meacham, will be made through official channels. Well, I only... Captain York, what's in those boxes? They're marked books, sir. More likely cheap whiskey. No, no, he's lying. I'll open them and see, Captain. Mulcahy. Rachel. You're the colonel. Here, here, what are you doing? You have no right to... Oh, 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 it's a miracle, sir. The books have turned into whiskey in a barrel. Uh, uh, I have a government license to keep a medicinal supply of... What shall we do with the books, Colonel? Destroy them. Mulcahy. Yes, sir. And what about these Winchester rifles, sir? Destroy them, too. No, no, you can't. This is private property. You have no right Meacham, to... Meacham, you're a blackguard, a liar, a hypocrite, and the stench in the nostrils of an honest man. If it were in my power, I'd hang you from the nearest tree and leave your carcass for the buzzards. But as a representative of the United States government, you are entitled to the protection of my command. But that is all. Good day, sir. You sent for me, Colonel? Sit down, Captain York. Yes, sir. Now... About this Cochise, we've got to bring him back. In six campaigns, he's outgeneraled us, outfought us, and outrun us. That's just the point. There aren't enough troops in the territory to make him come back. But one man, a man he trusts, might persuade him. Cochise knows me. You're a fool, Captain. Assuming you found Cochise, his men would cut you to pieces. That's possible, sir, but I've never lied to Cochise, and if you'll assure him decent treatment for his people, A I... carbine against his spine might be more persuasive. Oh, I'd have to go unarmed, sir. Have you forgotten what happened to the men on the repair wagon? Well, I can't fight my way to Cochise. Other men have tried that. If we could manage to get him back to United States soil... Hmm. Well, you have my permission, Captain. How many men will you need? One, sir. Sergeant Beaufort. He knows the country. He was born in Mexico. I'd like to leave at once, sir. Proceed, Captain, and take your sergeant. I hope you make it. Uh, 
Three days, Sergeant Beaufort, and we haven't seen a sign of an Apache. See, si, but they have seen us. You can be sure of that. Captain, look. Look over against that hill. A signal mirror. Another one answering from this side. Yeah, they're here, all right. We're between them. Come on, Beaufort, smile. Uh, it's too late to do anything else. They must be camped right above us. That is not always right above us. Look up. Look up on the rocks. Holy smokes. Covered with Apaches. On both sides of the past, thousands of them. Looks like they were expecting us. Keep smiling, Beaufort. We're going in. Captain, look at those rifles they're carrying. Winchester seven-shot repeaters. Our friend Meacham. Uh, looks like every chief in the tribe is here. Eyes straight ahead, Buenas tardes, coaches. We come in peace. Buenas tardes, friend. Captain York, you got back. Well? Cochise has crossed the river, Colonel. He's coming in with all these people. He wants to talk peace. He's back on American soil? Yes, sir. Good. Captain, the regiment moves out at dawn. The regiment? But I promised Cochise we'd meet him alone, unarmed. You and me and Meacham. Why Meacham? He insists Meacham be present. Oh, very well. You will prepare your troops to march at dawn. But... Cochise will think I've tricked him. Exactly. We have tricked him. We've tricked him into returning to American soil, and I intend to see that he stays here. Colonel, I gave Cochise my word. Your word to a breech-clouded savage? To an illiterate, uncivilized murderer and treaty breaker? There is no question of honor, sir, between an American officer and Cochise. There is to me, Colonel. You can't send out the regiment. Captain York, so long as you are in my command, you will obey my orders. The regiment will march at dawn. Is this approximately where you were to meet Cochise, Captain York? Just about. Halt the troops. Oh! 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 Captain, I propose to deploy our men, sending two troops to the north and one to the east. The Apaches, sir, are neither north nor east, and they're not in their encampment. If you'd been watching the dust swirls to the south, as most of us were, you'd know they're over there, just coming over the ridge. That's Cochise now, sir. They're about four to our one. Most of them with Winchester rifles. Do we talk, Colonel, or fight? You seem easily impressed by numbers, Captain. However, I'll honor your word to Cochise. Where's Mr. Meacham? Meacham! Here, sir. At your Mr. Side, Meacham, Colonel. we are riding out to talk with Cochise. Oh, he's not the kind you can talk to, Colonel. I warn you. You will to... accompany us, Mr. Meacham. Yeah. Come on, Captain. Hup! Hup! Take over, York. I have the honor, illustrious chief, of presenting the commander of our regiment, Colonel Thursday. We have come to talk. The Apaches are a great nation. Proud, never conquered. But it's not good for nation always to fight. Young men die, old ones hungry. So I bring my people to a reservation. Then this man come make trouble. He means you, Meacham. He, he, he lies. The evil man who make my people bad is worse than war. He starved my children. No. He killed my people. No, it's not true. I... Send him away and we will talk peace. If not, there will be more war. Are you threatening us? Colonel, Why... don't interrupt. It's an insult. And for each of us, you kill. Ten white men will die. Silence! I did not come here to be threatened. Cochise, I find you without honor. That government which I represent 
orders you to return to the reservation by dawn, or we will attack. It's getting light, Colonel. What do you think? I think they've had their chance. Now it's time they had their lesson. Hand me your binoculars, Captain. Yes, sir. Mm, I don't see them. Not a one down in the pass. They're there, sir, but not down in the pass, up on the rim rock. How can you know that? Because if I were Cochise, that's where I'd take up my position. What about that dust cloud at the far end of the pass? It's an Apache trick, sir. Women and children dragging mesquite to make us ride through that narrow pass into an ambush. Very ingenious, Captain. You make me suspect that your Cochise studied under Alexander the Great at least. Gentlemen, mount your troops. We charge through the pass in a column of fours. Mounted in fours? Colonel, that'd be suicide. I tell you, they're up in those rocks on either side of the pass. It's an ambush. Captain York, there is no room in this regiment for a coward. You will remain on the ridge in safety with the supply wagons. Yes, sir. A charge in fours? Thursday was insane. I took Sergeant Mulcahy with me and wheeled the wagons back up onto the ridge. Roll up! The regiment started forward at the half gallop. The faces of the men set and grim. There they go, Captain. The finest lads I ever soldier. First the A Company. Down into the pass. They didn't have a chance, but they kept charging through. B Company. C Company. Horses, men, racing, shooting, tumbling crazily as they fell screaming. Captain, look! Colonel Thursday's been hit! Keep me covered, Mulcahy! Colonel Thursday! York, hump me on your horse! Here, follow me, Colonel. I'm dug in on the ridge top. No, Captain, your saber... I must rejoin my command. There is no command. It's wiped out. We're all that's left of it. Don't you understand? Us and the wagons on the ridge. Then back to your ridge, Captain. We'll charge in fours. Come Come back. Come back. Come back. Hurry, Captain, over here. Thanks, Mulcahy. Down quick. You'll draw their fire. What difference does it make? Wiped out. Wiped out. Every man. The devils. The murdering devils. It's all over. No. Here they come. A whole Apache nation. We've got a rifle apiece and 40 rounds, Captain. No, wait. Make them count. Every one for the men that's gone. No, Sergeant. Hold your fire. Cochise is riding out to us. Here. Take my gun. But, Captain... I gave Cochise my word. I'll meet him unarmed. Why, Colonel, say Cochise without honor? Why, Colonel, dead... I give you your flag. For a moment, Kochi stared at me. Then he wheeled his horse, and like a great wind, the Apaches rode away. he gave us back our flag, the regimental guidon we'd carried into battle. But now the regiment of Fort Apache has been reformed. The names are all changed. Those others haven't been forgotten because they haven't died. They're living right out there. Tomorrow when we take to the field, they'll be riding with us. 
Collingwood, O'Rourke, Mulcahy, Beaufort, yes, and Thursday. Their names may change and their faces, but they're the regiment and the regular army, now and 50 years from now. You have just heard the last act of Fort Apache. In a moment, our stars, John Wayne and Ward Bond, and screen director John Ford will return to the microphone. Out here in Hollywood, they sell maps to sightseers that show where the movie stars live. Now, if you could only step inside those homes instead of just driving by, you would find that most of the picture people lead normal, everyday lives, just like you and me. On these hot summer weekends, for instance, the chances are you'd find them out in the backyard under a shady tree with their neighbors and friends, playing gin rummy, or just chatting over bottles of cold Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Everything in perfect taste. Blue Ribbon taste. And it's that Blue Ribbon taste that makes this internationally famous beer so popular here in Hollywood. We happen to have a movie star here in the studio who I think will verify that statement. The star of our radio program... Mr. John Wayne. John, is it true that Pabst Blue Ribbon is a big favorite in Hollywood? Well, offhand, I'd say it's quite popular. What do you mean, offhand? I mean, I have no way of knowing except that I see Pabst Blue Ribbon served in a lot of Hollywood homes. Well, do you serve it in your own home? I sure do. It's a good beer. Now, how about a word from the director of Fort Apache if Ward Bond will bring Pappy over here? What do you mean, bring Pappy over here? That's the trouble with you actors. Just because I'm a director, you think I'm afraid of a microphone. Well, Pappy? Well, I am, and that's why I'm going to say good night and get out of here. There speaks one of the world's greatest directors. Come on, Pappy. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. And good night to you, John Wayne, Ward Bond, and John Ford. Don't forget, tomorrow is the beginning of another weekend. Two whole days to relax and have fun. You'll be planning picnics and backyard barbecues. Just be sure there's plenty of Pabst Blue Ribbon cooling in your icebox. Tomorrow morning, ask your dealer for a case. In cans or bottles, Pabst Blue Ribbon is the finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Next week on Screen Directors Playhouse, Pabst Blue Ribbon presents Jezebel, starring Betty Davis. Fort Apache was presented through the courtesy of Argosy Pictures, producers of Mighty Joe Young. John Wayne will be seen shortly as the star of the John Ford Argosy production, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. Ward Bond will soon be seen in Paramount's new Bing Crosby picture, Riding High. John Ford is currently directing the 20th Century Fox production, Front and Center, starring Dan Daly and Colleen Townsend. Included in tonight's cast were Sharon Douglas, Paul McVeigh, Tony Barrett, Eddie Fields, Pat McGeehan, Lou Merrill, and Don Stanley. Fort Apache was adapted for radio by Warren Lewis, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse was produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. Listen again next week when Pabst Blue Ribbon presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, production Jezebel, director William Wyler, star Betty Davis. Screen Director's Playhouse is brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois, and sent your way with the best wishes of the Pabst Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. James Wallington speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.